Today we're going to learn the bubble stitch. With this stitch you will be able to create lots of texture and also you will be able to create some details like noses, thumbs, etc. So if you're interested, stay and watch! The bubble stitch is a series of unfinished double crochets. So to make a bubble stitch we are going to start the same way as we would with a double crochet. So we yarn over, we go through this first stitch, take some yarn, pull through and now I'm going to go through the first two loops in my hook. And if this was a normal double crochet then I would take yarn again and then go through the next two. But I'm going to leave it unfinished like that. Now I'm going to yarn over again and now I'm going into the same stitch as before. I yarn over and I go through the first two loops in my hook. Again, yarn over, go through the same stitch as before, yarn over and then go through both loops, the first two loops in your hook. And one last time, yarn over, go into that stitch as before, yarn over, go through the first two loops in your hook. And now as you can see I have five loops in my hook. That means I've done this four times. There is always one more loop in your hook. Bubble stitches can have different sizes. It depends on how many times you go into that stitch and make this process we have just seen. Usually they vary between three times and five times and depending on how many times you do it, it will become bigger or smaller. And why is that useful to make a migurumi? Because for example, if I want to make a big nose, I can use a bubble stitch made of five unfinished double crochets. But for example, if I want to make a smaller nose, I can do it just three times or four times. It depends on what you want to do. In this case, I've done it four times. And now that I have all these loops in my hook, I'm going to yarn over again and then make my yarn go through all these five loops like that and this way I'm closing the bubble stitch and to secure it I'm going to make a single crochet next to my bubble stitch if I put my finger in the inside I can make this bubble to pop out and like that we have the first bubble stitch Let's make another one, this time with five unfinished double crochets. This way you will see a difference in size. So again, yarn over, go through the stitch, yarn over and go through the first two loops. Let's make the second one. As you can see now we have six loops in our hook. This is because we have made five unfinished double crochets. We always will have one extra loop, okay? And now that we have all these loops we're going to yarn over again and make our yarn go through all these six loops. And now I'm going to make a single crochet next to my bubble stitch. Sometimes it's a bit difficult to see where you have to insert your hook because as there is so much yarn in the previous stitch in the bubble stitch that it might be a bit difficult to see where you have to put your hook. And here you can see three different sizes of bubble stitches. It depends on how many unfinished double crochets we have made. This is the first one, the first one we made. This one has four unfinished double crochets this is the medium size then we have this other one that has five and this other one is the smallest one it has only three and you need to choose which one is best for your project depending on what you want to do 
For example, to make this nose, I made a small bubble stitch with three unfinished double crochets because I wanted this doll to have a cute nose, I didn't want a, a huge one and I didn't want to embroider it. So this is a good option. And what happens if you have to make many rounds using this bubble stitch? Well, the ideal is not to make two bubble stitches together or two single crochets together and not to put the bubble stitch on another bubble stitch. So it's good to alternate. So when you make one bubble stitch on top of it, you put a single crochet. And when you make a single crochet on top of it, you put a bubble stitch. This pineapple is an example of what I was explaining. As you can see, the bubble stitches are never one on top of the other one. As you can see here, there is a single crochet and on top of it, a bubble stitch, etc. And to increase and decrease when you're making bubble stitches, well, what I recommend is that you do it actually when you're making the single crochets. You can do it using the bubble stitch, but it's a bit more difficult. Like for example, if you want to increase using the bubble stitch, then you could make two bubble stitches in the same stitch, but it would be way too bulky. It can be done, but it would be too bulky. And if you want to decrease, what I advise you is instead of doing strange things with your yarn, I would advise you to skip one stitch and then make the bubble stitch in the next one. As you're skipping one stitch, you're naturally decreasing. As you can see, the bubble stitch is really easy to make and it has endless possibilities. And if you're interested in getting the patterns of the pineapple or the center, you will find the links just here in the description box. So thank you very much for staying with me and see you next week in Crafteando Que es Gerundio. Bye!